tell you a little bit about how we got into uh, using music. Or letting yeah. music use me. Yeah. Uh, and we'll do that musical experiment I was talking about. When I was 21, I said yes to these friends. They wanted me to go on a mountaineering expedition to Peru, to the Andes. So after two trips there, and from banging my head, well, what did I discover when I got there? That there were all these Indians all over the place, and they were speaking what? Quechua, the Inca language. Now, I had read in my history book in grade school that the Incas had been conquered by Pizarro. And I, of course, assumed, like everyone else in class, that when they were conquered, they went poof and disappeared. And when I got to Peru when I was 21, and I saw that they were still there, six million of them, still speaking the Inca language, I was amazed. I was like, oh, I really want to be able to talk to these people. And I discovered that because I had been born an American, I was really dumb. And I didn't know how to learn languages. And uh, so I, did, I went uh, to school. I went through anthropology and I went through linguistics. And I went to a two-month intensive course at Cornell University immersion program in the Inca language. And then I went back down three years later. I'm 24 years old. I've got a Bolivian guitar on my back. And I go to the end of a road and I walk for three days across the Altiplano cross glaciers, come out on the eastern slope of the Andes, and under those clouds down on the edges of the Amazon jungle, I find a village. I walk into the village, it's empty. They've seen me coming, they're scared. <laughs> I've never seen someone that looks like me before. So I sit in the middle of the village, and I sing, Now that was the experiment. Did you see how your faces all lit up? <laughs> now if I was playing for an Arab audience, when we had sung, Win la, ah, that's the way all their faces would have lit up. It's amazing. Anyway, uh, within 15 minutes, everyone was back and we were having a party. <laughs> no, stay at my house. Oh, I've got an extra stone shack there. You're welcome to stay as long as you want. And pretty soon we're singing. <laughs> Hermosa linda cholita, yaris pavaganaita, por de granadas tiquita. Anyway, after eight years in Peru, coming and going, I had a company called Cameron's Terrible Tours. <laughs> and I took young folks to remote parts of Peru. And uh, I had a social life in southern Peru that wouldn't quit. Any village I went to, I ran into Indian friends that told me where the next ceremony or party was. And then I got hired by a school to take kids to remote locations in Michoacan. And I ended up exploring uh, remote locations in Michoacan and learning the music in from Mexico. there. In Mexico. That's Mexico, yeah. And uh, I don't think we have time to sing all these. Uh, yeah, you need to play a little bit. A little bit of it, she says, okay. Eres la más linda de mi vida Que yo no te lo diga Que yo no te lo diga Yo quisiera que sepas Nunca quise así Que mi vida comienza Cuando te conocí, 
such an easy step for me. I thought, my God, I've devoted my whole life to going up the spine of the new world from the Andes to the Rocky Mountains. And I find these incredibly open hearts and souls. I can sit with my Peruvian friends on the high mountain sides at night and we can look at the stars together and they'll ask me, do you know? No, I don't know. Then I ask them, do you know? And they say, no, we don't know. But I had this feeling that once I got into the world on the other side of the ocean, I would be surrounded by people who knew. And I thought, oh, that's going to hurt. And it did. So, when I, I spent a year in Greece, and people like Yanis, he, he knew, he knew. He knew. <laughs> he was Greek. Actually, he was on the island of Crete. He probably had blood from a Minoan civilization running in his veins. And I discovered, as I thought, that these civilizations that have written records that go back thousands of years, it's a whole other thing. Anyway, you get the point. You, ha you end up being stripped of your belief system if you live there for very long, and it's very painful. It's like they're merciless. And, uh, you know, even your idealism, your peace activism, your, your yearning for like, you know, yeah, everything, you know, it's ridiculous to them. They've, they've got these ancient ways of thinking about the world, and if you want to hang out with them, you need to shed who you are and start learning. And uh, it's very painful the first time it really happens to you big time. But thanks to these guys, I was stripped naked and I was uh, prepared then later to go places, other parts of the world, and really not have an agenda left. Just be a, a, a naked uh, soul, willing to learn how they think, how they feel, until you get to the core of who we all are, in spite of the dogmas and the, you know, the, the teachings that separate the Bulgarians from the Greeks, from the Turks, from the Arabs, from the, from the Persians, you know?